which should give some sense of what the purpose of the function is. The arguments and the return value. A well-written function, that'll be all you'll need to know about it. In other words, ultimately, when we're done here today, and we have a custom class that contains this code, all anyone would need to know is the name of the class, the name of the function, the arguments, and the return value. They wouldn't have to know anything about how to calculate centigrade to Fahrenheit. They just need to know what I'm going to give it and what I'm going to get back. And what you're giving is temp and what you're getting back is type? No. no. I'm giving it both temp and type. Okay. Right? To do the calculation, I have to tell it the temperature I want to convert and the type of conversion I want to do. Yeah, yeah. All right? The return value is defined here. And the return value doesn't have a name. It just is we define the type of it. So it is it is a double. So I'm going to dim. <clears throat> I'm going to return a variable for that return value. And I'm going to copy this code in here. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to change this name to double convert. I need to change this function a little bit because this function still has carryovers from where it was before. Do I need to change this line? No. We have a vote for no. Do we have a vote for yes? Yes. Okay. Why do we have to change this line? Right. Yeah. We have to change this because the whole goal of putting this in a function is so that it doesn't depend on the, the name of stuff on the page. And if we chose, for example, to replace the drop down with radio buttons, all right, we should be able to do that without touching this function. As long as we give this function the type of conversion, the function should work. So. I'm going to replace that with arg type. So if arg type equals f to c. All right. Double result was a variable up in the event. And double temp also is that variable. Instead, we're going to use arg temp, the argument that got passed in. Now, am I going to put that double convert, which is our answer, am I going to put that in the label? No. Why not? Because then I'd be tied back to the page. Right? So I don't want to say label results dot text equals something. Because then this function would only work if I wanted to put those results in the label called label results. The whole point of this exercise is to make it reusable. So what I want to do instead is I want to return the answer to whoever called it. Let whoever called this function worry about where it's going to put the results. You know, there's responsibilities here. The calling function, whoever calls this code, is responsible for gathering all the inputs, wherever they may be coming from. Maybe converting data. All right, we might have to convert data, convert the type of data. Then call the function and supply the arguments. All right. Then it's responsible for taking the results formatting it and displaying it on the page. So, 
this function is ready to roll. Notice this function doesn't refer to anything on the page. This function is, to use the term we, we used last time, is a black box. We give it something, we get back something, everything else is self-contained. All right, There's, this doesn't like peek and look to see something on the page or anything like that. Now we have to call that function. And we can call that function here. And we can say double result equals oops, So now the function is doing the calculation, so we don't have to do this calculation here. Nor do we have to do it here. So now look what we have. We have our event handler, which is sort of our glue code, right? It's going to glue, it's going to bring together our um, our um, user interface and the controls with our business function, with our custom code that we wrote. So, that event handler, what it does is if the page is valid, it grabs the temperature from the text box and converts it. It converts it because this function needs a double, right? That function needs a double. So it needs to convert that text temperature to a double. We then call the function. How do we call the function? We give the name of the function, and we give where the data is coming from for this function. Where does the data come from? Well, the temperature comes from the variable dbl temp, which we declare up here. The type of conversion comes from the value of drop-down conversion, specifically the selected value. That calls this function. This function goes and does its thing. All right? Does its calculation. When it's done, it returns this value. Whatever value it returns then gets stuffed in the variable double result. So when this function, when this line finishes executing, double result has the converted temperature in it, and then the rest of the page can go on and we can format and display the results. Let's run this to make sure it works. Then let's run it through debugger so that we can sort of x-ray in and watch every step of the process. So I'll run this. Just want to make sure that it works. And I'll put in 52 or 53 and we'll convert centigrade to Fahrenheit. Click convert. It tells me 53 centigrade is 127.4 Fahrenheit. So. Um, I would do the math to make sure that that conversion works, but I'm pretty confident that's correct, so um, our code still works. Now let's run this through debugger. All right, I'm going to set a breakpoint here, Oops. which means that when that line of code is executed, we're going to like x-ray the code so that we can follow through an instruction at a time and check the values of variables. So. Let's go and debug this. So I'll type in 53 again and say I want to convert centigrade to Fahrenheit. When I click convert, all right, it's showing me now it's executing that instruction. When it points to the instruction, it's about to execute it. It hasn't executed it yet. That's important to know because you know, in an assignment statement, the variable won't have the value until after the instruction is done. So, is valid? Is this valid going to be true or false? What do you think? True. It's going to be true. Why do you say it's going to be true? Because 
but saying it's valid, so it would have to be true. Because it wouldn't it wouldn't give the in, it wouldn't give the input from the text boxes if it wasn't valid. If it's it, it's the right to the time. validators. It's right. not a string. Or okay. You're all kind of right. Probably the, the best explanation is all the validator controls returned that it was valid. If we look at this page, what do we have? We have a required field validator, and I think what you are getting at, we have a numeric validator. So, and we had a validator, a required, a required validator on the conversion type. So all those three validators worked. It's valid. There's something in the temperature. It's a number. And we selected something in the dropdown. So all the validators are valid. Therefore, the page is valid. If any one of the validators were not valid, all right, then the page would not be valid. And if I hover my mouse on is valid, sure enough, it tells me that is valid is true. <coughs> There'd be a subtler way to answer that question. All right? The subtler way to answer that question is, I know it's valid because I have client-side scripting enabled. Right? I I'm not suppressing my JavaScript through the browser. And if the page wasn't valid, then it wouldn't have submitted the page because the client-side validation would have caught it. So if, I, if you said the mere fact that this line is being executed and you have client-side scripting uh, enabled, tells me that it must be valid. Because if it wasn't valid, it wouldn't have made it this far. And that, that's, that would be a true statement as well. All right, so let's step through this process. All right, I hit F11. I'm now looking at this instruction. And temp text has a value of 53 as a string. Unfortunately, I don't think I can resize that, but you have to take my word for it. So it's going to convert 53 into a double and put that, re put that answer in double temp. So now when we're done, double temp has a value of 53. So it took the text box, converted it to a double, and stuffed that value into um, double temp. So double temp has a value of 53. Drop down conversion selected value has a value of C to F. And we can see that right down there. What does that mean? That means that we selected to do the centigrade to Fahrenheit uh, conversion. So we're now going to call the function. The event handler did the first part of its job, right? It grabbed the input from the form. It did whatever conversions are necessary. That is, it converted the string in the text box to a number. All right. It grabbed the selected value of the dropdown. And now I'm going to call the function and give it those parameters to operate on. So if I hit F11, it shows me ah, I'm calling the function now. See, this was the last line it executed up here to call that function. It's now calling the convert temperature function. And arg temp has a value of 53. Why? Well, because dbl temp had a value of 53. So whatever value was in that variable gets plopped into this argument. Likewise, um, drop down conversion selected value had a value of c to f. Therefore, our type is going to have a value of c to f. All right. So. We now look to see if our type has a value of f to c. Does it have a value of f to c? No, it doesn't. Therefore, this if statement is false. And we do this conversion that says take 53, multiply it by 9, divide by 5, and add 32, which gives us the result of 127.4. All right? Double convert is declared inside this function. All right. Can this function see the value of double convert? No. It's called scope. 
If a variable is defined within a function, it can only be used within that function. So therefore, I couldn't write code up here that said double convert or double result equals double convert or something like that. Because this function up here can't see double convert. That was declared within that function. Another way to say that, the, the more proper programming lingo to say that, is that variable only has scope within that function. So what do we have to do? We have to somehow get that answer back to whoever called it. And that's exactly what the return does. The return effectively sends a message back to whoever called this function and say, hey, here's your answer, and your answer is 127.4. If you made that a public function, would, would the variables be available to the rest of the program? No. It um, doesn't have anything to do with whether it's a public or, or a, a private function. It has to do with the fact that the variable is declared inside the function. Okay, so now, the function did its thing. It took the values it was given, did its calculation, and it returned the value of 127.4. Where does that value of 127.4 go? It goes in the variable called dbl result. Right, so if I hit F11 one more time, and we look at DBL result, DBL result gets the value of the return value. So, whenever you see an expression like this, something equals a function, what that's saying is the return value from that function gets put in this variable. And then you can do something with it. Maybe we just want to display it in a label. Or maybe we want to do some kind of special formatting, which is what we want to do in this case. We do our formatting to prepare our string, all right, and then we output to the label. And we have that result. Question about any step of this process? Yes? Um, oh, I'm sorry, next you're going to break it into its own separate file, right? Next we're going to create a class for it, correct. Because what we did is we sort of loosened it a little bit, you know. It's like the old pickle jar, you know, the lid's on real tight. It's tightly coupled, the lid to the jar, all right? And you struggle with it for a while, give it to someone else, and they pop it right off. You say what? Well, I loosened it for you, all right? What we did right here is we loosened that jar. Because now it's not going to take much work to go and put this in a separate file. But it's important before we do that that we understand what's going on here. Because that's just taking it one level further. Now, this code can be called from any different place on this one page. So we made this code a little bit reusable. It can be called if we added another text box. So let's go and add another text box. I won't add the validation, but I'll add another text box here. Or actually, I won't add a text box. I'll add a drop down. There we go. Let's add a drop down here. label next to it for the results. Or let's live it up and we'll put a text box for the results. Yeah. We're, we're living now. Why did I choose a text box instead of a label here? I just want to show that when you separate out this function, it doesn't matter what you do with the results. You can format it, put it in a label, put it in a text box, whatever. It doesn't really matter. 
All right, let's go and let's just put a couple values into our drop down. Um, I don't want to do that. Let's go here and let's limit the choice of uh, values from the drop down to. We'll do maybe two through however many values I have there. We'll go one through seven for the second temperature. All right. So, good news is, shouldn't have to touch this function, because that function is not coupled to the form anymore. What do I have to do? Well, I have to call that function again. So I'll have to do something like this. After I do the first number, I'll say, double temp equals C double what did I call that drop down? Drop down this one. So now I'm getting the value for the second conversion. Yeah, well. Yeah, thank you. I thought you were saying that the Christmas season was coming up soon. For a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels like we that outside today. Yeah. All right. Anyhow. So I'm grabbing the value from there. I can call the function again. This time I'm going to give it the value from the drop down as the temperature, and I'm still going to do the conversion type. And now, instead of what I call the text box, text converted to. Now, instead of putting it in a label, I can put it in that text box. We saw that before, right, where we got an error until we went and saved it. Um, that's odd. I never experienced that before. Usually it does those things more seamlessly. But anyhow, all right. So now when we run this, I can do two temperatures at once. So I can say, give me 32 degrees and 4 degrees convert from Fahrenheit to centigrade. I'm going to simply tell it to continue. And it goes in and it did the one calculation and put the result in the label just as it did before. And the calculation of 4 degrees Fahrenheit, it converts to negative 15 degrees centigrade and puts it in the text box. So notice that 
I didn't have to duplicate the calculation part of it at all. And that's really what my goal was. All right. I'm going to have to have code somewhere that's coupled to the form, that pulls stuff out of the form and calls the function and then puts stuff back into the form. So I'm going to have to have that code somewhere. But that code shouldn't have uh, and shouldn't be coupled with the code that actually does a calculation. Those two should be kept separate. So we now have code that on this page at least is reusable. All right. In other words, um, we could add as many drop downs, text boxes, radio buttons, whatever, that contain temperatures. And we could call that function, get the results, and display it however we wanted to. So we made our first big leap in reusability. This code is not, and by this code I mean the, quote, business logic by calculation is not coupled to the user interface at all. It doesn't refer to anything on the page doesn't get the values from anything on the page. Everything it needs to do its thing gets passed as an argument. All right? It then does its thing, does its calculation, and then returns an answer. All right? Now, the limitation of this is this will only work on this page. If I were to create another page with a text box or whatever, I'd still have to duplicate it. So we're not all the way there yet, right? But we've made a big jump. Now we're going to remove the, the, the lid from the pickle jar because we did the hard part. That part there was the hard part, all right? The easy part is going to be to put it in its own file, all right? So what do we do? We go up here and file new we stop debugging. Let me take that break point out. We go up to File, New, File, and we choose Class. We want to create a class. What is a class? A class is essentially a custom class that we're creating for some reason. And the reason we're doing it here is to sort of capture or encapsulate our business rules. All right? So that everything about temperature conversion that would ever want will be in this one place. In fact, we could make a giant conversion class that did any sort of converting measurements between kilometer and miles and feet and centimeters and anything that you'd want to do. We could create functions in this class. So we could have more than one function in this class. And ideally, it would have everything that you need to know about doing these sorts of conversions. All right, so any program that needed to do a conversion could use this class. I'm going to give it a name. I'm not going to keep the name as class 1. I'm going to give a name of conversion. Click Add. It's going to give me a warning. It wants to put this in a certain folder, all right? So I'm going to let it. So I'll say, yeah, I'll put it in that folder. So now we have a class that is named conversion. What we have to do is cut the code out of the page and put it in here. Do you expect that to be a problem? Why or why not? I don't expect it to be a problem. Because it's not exactly, because it's not a couple. It's not tied at all to that page. So it shouldn't be a problem to cut that out and put it anywhere I want to. So I'll go in here. I'll cut that code out. So it's off the page altogether now. And I'll put it in there. Is it best to do it in these steps for ease of creating and then... Um, that would be your call. Is it best to do it in steps or, or to do it uh, all in one leap? Um, my suggestion with you is 
you know sort of assess yourself